Hello everybody, and welcome to the 40 and Slip Bedtime Stories. Tonight, the true story of the origins of the Ouija board. In February of 1891, papers began to be sprinkled with advertisements about Ouija, the wonderful talking board, describing a mystical divining device that offered answers to questions regarding the past, present, and future with marvelous accuracy and even testified as proven at the patent office before it was allowed. Price, $1.50. The magical talking board was at the time basically the same board you see today. A flat board with the letters of the alphabet arrayed in two semicircles above the numbers 0 through 9. The words yes and no in the uppermost corners, goodbye at the bottom, and the board comes with a planchette, which is a teardrop shaped device, usually with a little window that is used to maneuver around the board. People would put their fingers on the planchette, ask a question, and watch in amazement as their questions are answered, while the planchette moves of its own accord. The only real difference between the board of yesterday and the board of today is that now the board is cardboard instead of wood and the planchette is plastic. The real history of the board is about as cryptic as how the game works. But according to Ouija historian Robert Murch, it came right out of the American 19th century obsession with spiritualism which for some reason was okay with Christian belief structure so you could go to a seance on Saturday and go to church on Sunday guilt-free. It was in 1886 that the fledgling Associated Press reported on a new craze taking over spiritualist camps in Ohio, the talking board. It was basically the same board we all know today. The article went what we would call today viral, but it was a man from Baltimore, Maryland named Charles Kennard who jumped on it. In 1890, he pulled together a group of four investors that included Elijah Bond, an attorney, and Colonel Washington Bowie, a surveyor, to start the Kennard Novelty Company. However, they didn't have a name for the Kennard Talking Board yet, and contrary to popular belief, Ouija is not a combination of the French word for yes, we, oui, and the German ja. It was Bond's sister-in-law, Helen Peters, a supposed strong medium, who gave them the name that we all know today. They sat around a table and asked the board what they should call it. The name Ouija came through, and when they asked what it meant, the board said, good luck. It should be noted, however, that Peters was wearing a locket that may have had a picture of the woman's rights activist, Ouija, with the name above her head, and that this was just a misreading of that by one of the other participants. When they brought the board to the patent office in Washington, the chief patent officer required a demonstration. He asked them to correctly spell his name, which was supposed to be unknown to Bond and Peters. They sat down with the board and correctly spelled the man's name. Whether or not it was spirits from beyond or the fact that one of them knew the man's name, on February 10th, 1891, a shaken patent officer gave Bond a new patent for his toy or game. 